Bye church, how are you guys doing this evening? Doing good? You're probably wondering, wait, did Pastor DJ just change his clothes? Is this Pastor Frank? No, I'm another Filipino. <laughs> and I am the location pastor, your location pastor in Metro Manila. Let me hear you say Mabuhay. It's cool, it's cool right now because as I am preaching right here in Waikele, my beautiful wife is preaching in Metro Manila at the same time. She's at the same time, so at the same time. So I just want to just say hi to my wife. No, just, just kidding. But I believe God has a good word for us. Can I get an amen? We just came from a week from conference. Did anybody here go to conference? Make some noise if you went to conference. Amazing, amazing. And I get the privilege to preach um, this message with you and for you. And I'm just thankful for our pastors, Pastor Mike and Pastor Lisa, for letting this Filipino, no, I'm not a compassion child, but letting me come here and, and share that message. Can we thank Pastor Mike and Pastor Lisa for just raising up people to fulfill their God-given potential. Today, I want to talk about something special. I want to talk about what God has been speaking to me throughout that conference. Pastor Mike said this thing. He goes, you will go on a personal track when you're at conference. God's going to speak to you. And he's been speaking to me about this theme um, for a couple of weeks already. And the theme is this. It is the presence of God. It's the presence of God. How many guys here love the presence of God? Scripture says this, Psalm 1611, and I'm going to pray. It says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Did you get that? In your presence, there is fullness of joy. He didn't say this, when your problems go away, then you will have fullness of joy. He didn't say this, when you get healed, you will have fullness of joy. He says, in your presence, in His presence, you will have fullness of joy. Does anybody here want the presence of God? Does anybody here want the fullness of joy? And so it's in His presence. My question that I've been struggling with is this, and maybe you've been struggling with it. How do I know I'm in His presence? Like, how do I know? Like in conference, I know he, I was in His presence, right? You're just like, oh my gosh, it's so good. But how do I really know? Some people will say to you, they'll be like, whoa, do you feel His presence? Right? They'll, look, they'll show you their, their skin. Oh, chicken skin. Right? Do, do you feel, oh my gosh, I feel His presence. But sometimes I'm like, yeah, it's so good. But I don't feel it. I just pretend. Right? I'm like, I don't know if this is an allergic reaction or what, right? Like, how do I know? How, how do we know we are in His presence? Is it chicken skin? Is it, oh my gosh, I feel it. Is time slowed down? Like, how do I know? Because sometimes I don't feel nothing. But am I in His presence? So what I want to do today is I want you to know that if you feel that way, you're not alone. I'm a pastor. Sometimes I feel like that. Maybe I'm not going to be a pastor anymore after I confess that. But right now, I'm still a pastor. But today, I want to show you the landmarks of His presence. So I want to read from a scripture in Isaiah chapter 6. Would you just stand to your feet as I read the Word of God? And it says this, It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of His robe filled the temple. Attending Him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's army. The whole earth is filled with His glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. I am doomed for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with the burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? 
who will go for us and this is isaiah isaiah said here i am send me i need somebody here to say send me let's pray father god i thank you so much that we get to have an encounter with you that you are here that your presence is here and lord i pray that throughout this couple of minutes that we will begin to acknowledge and begin to see the landmarks of your presence that even when we don't feel it we will begin to see these things and say okay you're here god and if you're here then the fullness of joy is also here lord help me to preach and help us to listen lord have your way bless us as we bless you in jesus mighty name everybody in this house says amen amen and amen hey before you sit down would you high five somebody next to you and tell them man you look better after i prayed you look better after i prayed let me hear you say landmarks landmarks of his presence i remember when i first moved here to hawaii I was living in Los Angeles, and I moved here about eight years ago, and we were living here, and I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to shop or wh where, where to go. We were still in the Waikele Elementary School. I remember asking someone, what's a good supermarket to go to? And someone came up to me, and they said, oh, you should go to Don Quixote, right? Anybody go there, right? Any Nobody, okay. More Foodland fans. Oh, I get it, I get it. And so I asked them, okay, how do I get there? And this is the directions they started giving me. They said, okay, Don Coyote, you just go down the kind, and then you make a right over here, and then a left down the kind. And I'm like, okay. I have no idea what you're talking about, right? And what was happening was they just, they just had a visual of the way to get there. Am I speaking to somebody here? And so what they were trying to show me in a description was they're trying to show me landmarks how to get to that place. When I was coming this way, I, I, uh, I called my friend Henson, and I go, hey, Henson, where are you? He goes, okay, I'm almost there. I'm by Buzz's Steakhouse. I don't know where that is. Like, uh, that, 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 okay, that's cool. <laughs> like, what does that even mean, right? And, and I remember in Philippines. In Philippines, someone, uh, I was asking someone, um, they were asking me how to get to here, and I started telling them landmarks. I said, okay, you're going to see a Jollibee and a 7-Eleven. I didn't know there's like a Jollibee and a 7-Eleven on every corner, right? And when people give you directions, they're going to tell you that, especially in the film. You're going to see a Jollibee make a right. Then you're going to see Bobong's a canteen make a left. When you see the white dog eating the white cat, make a right. And you're right there. You're right there. They give you these landmarks to give you a sense of direction. When you do see the white dog eating the white cat, you'll be like, okay, I know where I'm at, right? I'm, I'm just, this is Philippines, by the way, right? <laughs> These landmarks, and I started to think, are there landmarks to know we are on the right direction towards the presence of God? And in this scripture, it began to show me what actually it looks like when you're in the presence of God. Because let's be honest, a lot of times when we think about the presence of God, we think there's going to be a feeling, which there is at times, right? Like, oh my gosh, it feels God is here. I feel it. But what happens when the person next to you says, I feel it, but you're sitting next to them, but you don't feel it? Does that mean only God's presence is with them, but not with you? Like he's isolating and placing a spiritual wall and saying, no, sorry, you're not invited to this party. How do I really know I'm in the presence of God? Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet. And you already know, and we've seen this, and I've read it, he begins to have a vision to be in the presence of God. This is crazy. He is literally in the presence of God. It says, in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Just picture that. He is in the presence of God. He has a vision. The king Uzziah died, and, he's, and, and it was a great king, and he's worried what's going to happen to our nation. He sees God on a throne. The train of his robe fills the temple. Now there are seraphims, angels. The, the translation of a seraphim, these are not Cupid angels. You know the cute little ones with the, right, the little heart arrows? This is not, these are angelic beings and it says they are known to be fiery ones. They're on fire. They're just flying. 
like the sound effects. Those are great. The sound effects. They're, they're, they're flying, and it says that they have two wings covering their faces, two wings covering their feet, two wings up in the air. Let's just say these are not cute Valentine angels. This is scary. They're flying, and there is smoke, and there is yelling, and there is singing, and they're saying, holy, holy, seraphims everywhere doing all of this. They have, they, they're, they're filling the place with glory. The temple is shaking. There's an earthquake. There is, we have fake smoke just to make it look cool, but they have real smoke. It is everywhere. Get this. He is in the presence of God. Yes or no? Yes. So what is he going to do? Oh my gosh, this feels so good. Chicken skin. Look what he does. It says here, <laughs> it's all over. I'm doomed. In other words, I'm about to die. He says, I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips. I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king of the Lord of heaven's armies. Number one, how do I know I'm in his presence? The first landmark is this, when you see in the dark, when you see in the dark. Have you ever been in a room where you're about to turn off the lights, and so you go to the room, and then and the lights are on, and then when you turn off the lights, when you're about to walk back to your bed, you can't see anything, right? It totally changes, and then so you're like, okay, I think I remember where the bed was, right? And, and you start to go, and eventually, you know this, eventually your eyes adjust and you begin to see in the dark does that make sense i've realized this even though there are times when it is light out sometimes we still don't see i remember one time when when i was here i was living here um for three years three years and i go back and forth i was living in waipio i was driving my car back and forth from waipio to work to church to back back and forth my, my, you know, I didn't, I'm not a dirty person, right? I'm not, my, my car was okay. My car is clean, all of that. Then one day, one day, I'm about to go home. And I'm outside. And Pastor Mike doesn't, probably doesn't remember this, but Pastor Mike asked me, hey, Nolan, where are you going? I go, I'm about to go home. And he says, can I jump in? I go, what do you mean? Can I get in your car? Can you drop me off at Starbucks? And I was like, oh, you're going to come in? I mean, guys, I started seeing how dirty my car is. I'm like, oh, wait, 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 give me a minute. And I'm like, I'm, I'm hitting the thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, why does it smell like adobo? I'm opening the windows. I'm doing all of this thing. When he was not there, my car was normal. It was fine. When he decided to sit inside my car, now I begin to see every little dirty thing. I see all the dust. I see all the adobo. I, I see all of these things. Why? Because it was his presence in my car that began to let me see in the dark. Because sometimes routine makes you lose the details of life. It is the presence of God that allows us to begin to see things that we have not yet seen before. When Isaiah begin, it is in the presence of God, he is a prophet, he is called by God, but now he begins to say, oh my gosh, I am a sinful person, I've got filthy lips. I think it's very interesting that he begins to see in the dark and he says, I've got filthy lips. It's very interesting. He didn't say I'm a filthy person. He said, I have filthy lips. I don't know what he would do with those lips. I don't know if he was a complainer. I don't know if he would argue. I didn't know if he would curse. I don't know. But he realized, man, I've got something wrong with myself. See, one of the landmarks of the presence of God is you begin to see in the dark. And you might not say, I have filthy lips. But in, in comparison, you might have said this, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I'm not ready I don't know how. I don't know if I'm called. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think I'm going to fail. I'm not good enough. Am I speaking to somebody? And a lot of times you're going to be thinking that and you say, I'm not worthy. I don't think God will choose me. But could it be even those thoughts, those filthy lips thoughts, could it be you are actually in the presence of God? You're in his presence, church. Tell the person next to you, you're in his presence. 
So when you begin to feel that, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. Oh my gosh, I'm not worthy. I'm a, may, maybe God is just trying to reveal the areas in your life you need to work on. Can I tell you this? God is not rejecting you. He is simply redirecting you to a closer relationship with him. Can I get an amen in this place? It says in 1 John 1 verse 8, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in truth. If you say, well, pastor, I got so many issues. I'd rather go to you than someone who says, I got no issues. Choose me. The Bible says pride comes before the fall. And so if you're in that spot, you may, might be in the presence of God. Seeing your sin should draw you closer to God, not drive you farther away. You're in the presence of God. Somebody say presence. The second one is this. When you feel the burn. Ooh. Somebody say burn. When you feel the burn. Sometimes we read the Bible, but we don't really read it. I like looking into the details. And it says here, the one of the seraphim flew with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs, and he touched my lips with it, and he said, See, the coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed, and your sins are forgiven. Picture that. Isaiah is like, oh, wow, the train of his robe. Oh, my gosh, my lips, my filthy lips. And then all of a sudden, the angel, who was a fiery angel, he, the angel is already on fire. And so now he goes to the altar and he grabs a coal. He's already on fire. You would think that the angel who is already on fire would just grab the coal with his hands. But the coal is so hot, even the angels goes, I ain't touching that. That's too hot. I'm going to get some tongs. <laughs> That's a hot coal. And he grabs it and, he, and he's like, Ooh, flying, right? And, and he goes to Isaiah, and he goes to Isaiah, and he, and he touches the lips of Isaiah. This is not like, oh, oh, I feel purified. Have you ever been touched by a barbecue coal? Like just a little bit, you know what I mean? Like when I fry eggs, just a little oil, ah, babe, you do it. Now all of a sudden, the fiery angel grabs the coal with the tongue, and it touches his lips. Oh, that's painful. That hurts. That, 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 it, it is so painful. And then the angel has the audacity to say, the coal has touched your lips. I know. <laughs> I know. I feel it. How many of you guys remember this when you're little or you have little children? Whenever they fall, right? Usually the kids like to fall and they scrape their leg and they scrape their thing. And as a Filipino parent, you, first of all, you go in concern. Are you okay? But then you get mad at them. Why did you do that, right? <laughs> That's how we roll. And then when they got a cut, I don't know about you, but I remember my parents would put alcohol to clean it. Yeah, I know. That's how my parents were. Maybe not yours. But when they put it, right, ah, it burns. But what is that burn? That burn knows that it's cleaning it. See, church, when you are in the presence of God, it's not an automatic like, oh, wow, I can do it. Sometimes it's a burn. Sometimes it feels like coal is touching your lips. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it feels, oh, no, I can't do this. My life is too crazy. My life is too painful. But the Bible says that the burning comes when he begins to purify us. Psalm 66.10 says, you have tested us, O God, and you have purified us like silver. Dear friends, 1 Peter 4.12, look at this. This is Peter. Peter was a person who had a lot of mess-ups, right? He denied God. He said the wrong things a lot of times. And he went through some things. He tried to walk on water. He fell. He, he'd done all of this stuff. Later on, he writes a book, and he says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through. As if something strange were happening to you. Look, somebody here, there's some of us here, you're saying, God, why is this happening to me? Why is it hurting? Why I'm trying to get closer to you, but why is this burning? Why is my financial pocket burning? Why is my relationship burning? Why does it hurt? I just want more of you. I want my life transformed, but why does it burn? And Peter says, look, 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 don't get surprised. 
God loves you, so he's going to purify you. He wants to show you your full potential to rise to the top. Not the false potential, but the true potential. What does burning look like? Because it's not coal. Pastor Frank and Pastor DJ is not going to have an altar call and have coal here and start burning you, right? If they do that, just let me know. I'll talk to them. But what does burning look like? You know it. Here's one. Confession. When you know you did something wrong and you got to confess. Let's be honest. Sometimes I confess to God because I just want to get rid of the guilt, guilty feeling. All right? Like, God, I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't have done that. You know what burns? When I got to confess to the person I sinned against. I don't want to tell them. I don't want to tell my pastor. I don't want to tell my connect group. I'll just tell you, God. But the Bible says when you confess to God, right? When you confess to God, he, he will forgive you. But the Bible also says when you confess to man, he will heal you. And some of us here, we don't want to confess to man because we're going to feel the burn. How about this one? Confrontation. When you've been offended and you got to actually, the Bible says here in Matthew 18, 15, it's not on the screen, but it says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And it's like, go tell other people, you know what he did? Come here, come here, you know what he did? I can't believe it. No, you got to go straight to that person. Can I tell you? That burns. That burns, especially when you try to be honest. Say, hey, you know what you said? That hurt my feeling. What? That little thing? You're so sensitive. No, no, no. It burns. How about this one? Forgiveness. Oh, somebody's burning right now. You got to forgive. Sometimes we feel like, wait, uh, it still hurts. Uh, if I, I can't forget about it. No, no, no. Nobody said that you will forget about it when you forgive. It just means you're going to let go of it. It's not going to hold you down. It's not going to follow you. You might remember it, but it's not going to curse you also. Am I speaking to somebody here? Another thing that burns is repentance. It's one thing to acknowledge your faults. It's one thing to acknowledge your sins. But it's another thing to change your lifestyle, to go against from running from God, to go towards God. Come on now. These are going to burn. And please understand, this is is a part of being in the presence of God. It's not just chicken skin. It's not just that, oh my gosh, I love that song. Can we sing it again? But it's also the burning. It's also the burning. Tell the person next to you, feel the burn. I got some good news though also. That's not it. I'm done. I'm not done. But it says here, after he felt that burn, after the angels flew to him, after the coal touched his lips, after he felt like he was going to die, after he was confronted, after he went through all of these things, the whole time now, it says in verse 8, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I think it's beautiful what's happening right now. Please understand, the angels are still singing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The, the foundations are still shaking. It is still crazy. There is still smoke. There is still things going on. It is noisy. It is crazy. His lips are still burning. He's still, oh my gosh, this is going on. All of this, all of this thing's happening. And now he hears from the Lord. Sometimes we keep praying, God, I want to hear from the Lord. God, I want to hear from you. God, I want to hear from you. And when the burning comes, we reject it. And then we say, no, no, I don't want that. I want to hear from you, God. Take away this pain, God. I want to hear from you. And God is saying, I want, to, I want you to hear from me. But you got to go through the burn first. And then he begins to hear it. Number three, write this down. When you, when you hear above the crowd, you know you're in the presence of God when you hear above the crowd. Let me hear you say above the crowd. When you hear above the crowd. He had everything... <laughs> He had everything else to grab his attention. He could have been listening to the angels in fear. He could have been listening to the shaking in insecurity. He could have been listening to his own pains from the burning of his lips. He could have been listening. Or let me break it down. He could be listening to more of his problems than the promises of God. 
But I got this, but I got this issue. My lip, my, I'm hurting here. I've got this. My life is shaking. I can't see. There's too much smoke in my house. I don't know what's going. My family is like this. I'm lost. I don't know what's happening. What is going on? But it was because of the burning. It was because of the confrontation. It was because of the presence of God that now all of a sudden he hears God above the crowd. He hears God above his problems. He hears God above the pain. He hears God, and you might be saying, I've got issues, I've got pain, I've got all of this. God, take it away so I could hear you. And God is saying, I'm not going to take it away. I'm going to walk with you through it. I'm going to be with you. I'm already speaking. I'm already calling. I'm with you. When you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Here's a question. Who are you listening to? The Bible says in John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Who are you listening to? I remember my son about, I think last year, him and Zoe, he got into wrestling. So he, he likes to chase my daughter around and try to wrestle him, wrestle her, right? My son is 10, my daughter is 7. And so he's running around and he's like, come here, Zoe, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrestle you, right? And, and of course, as a good parent, I cheer them on, go, go, go. And then one time, my, my daughter did, did this move. She ran under the table, right? And she starts taunting him like a good sister. Come on, try to get me. And Josiah goes, ah, and he runs. He tries to dive and grab her. And when he went up, he hit his head right at the edge of the table. And he went, boom. And he got up, and literally, he's like this. And it was like a movie. It's like, yeah, I got a video. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stay there. I got, I got a video of this. It's crazy. And it's, it's bleeding, and he begins to see it. He begins to see that. He, he begins to see the blood on the table, and his eyes start. You could tell he's about to freak out, right? He's like, he's like that. And so I grab him, and I grab him, and, and, and then I go, boom. And I, no, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I show you how to wrestle, son. I grab him, and, and I do this, and I, I sit him down, and I go, you're, you're okay. Look at me, 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 right? And, and my wife goes and starts putting a compression on it, right? And she's freaking out, right? <laughs> look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, right? And, and I go, you're okay. And I start staring at him. I go, you're okay, you're okay. And this is what he said. Am I going to die? <laughs> That's what he said. Am I going to die? I go, no, no, you're not going to die. I serve a God of resurrection. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. I hope my, my kids turn out well. This is like an experiment right now. But I look at him and I said, just keep your eye on me. And this is what I said, no, you're not going to die. I'm here. I'm here. We're going to take you to the hospital. Right? You're good. You're good. He goes, okay, dad. I go, just hold on to this. I need your help. Hold on to it. Okay, dad. Just keep your eye on me. Don't look around because there's blood everywhere, right? <laughs> Don't look around. Okay, dad. And, then, and we started taking him out. We started walking him and we brought him to the hospital. Sometimes God is like that. Can I have the worship team to come up? Sometimes God is saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Wait, wait, son, daughter, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right. Just look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And But what we do sometimes, we look at the pain, we look at the problems, we look at the blood, we look at the low bank account, we look at the relationship, we look at the fight, we look at the kid that ran away, we look at these things and we say, oh my gosh, am I going to die? I can't do this. I'm not a good parent or I, I, I'm not a good this. I don't don't know if I have enough to, file, to pay for my bills. I don't know what's going to happen. Help. I don't know. And we get all crazed. And how many of you guys know sometimes those problems are very loud? But God is still looking at you and saying, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. 
You're not, you're not going to die. Look at me. I'm speaking to somebody right now. Look at God. He's telling you, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. He's not leaving you. He's with you. Come on, church. He's with you. He's going. He's there. He's for you. He's speaking to you. Whose voice are you listening to? Choose the voices. I see too many people get in an argument within their marriage or in their relationship and then they begin to ask advice to their friends who are single or who have bad marriages themselves you know what they did oh girl don't do that you know just leave what i've seen people who who have financial issues and they're going to their friends and, and telling them hey what do you think should i take this buy this still should I do this and they're, they're like yeah bro just go for it you only live once YOLO you're gonna get paid next week don't worry about it and they're getting financial advice from people who don't even know how to handle their own finances sometimes we're listening to voices to the voices that only agree with what we want the sheep hear the shepherd God is saying hey look look my presence is with you you feel the pain you see the filthy lips you see your faults that doesn't mean I've rejected you I'm directing you you feel the burn it's hard you feel the hurt sometimes it's hard to worship sometimes it's hard to lift your hands sometimes it, you don't want you feel these lies here's a lie that someone's listening to He's, you, you feel like you're fake, so you don't want to actually give you your all. I don't want to pretend. No, no, no. Please understand, you're not pretending. You're a work in progress. You're in process. And so he hears it. He hears God. He hears God calling him. And from the guy who's saying, I'm going to die. Oh my gosh, I'm going to die. My lips, my lips. Oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Now all of a sudden, you have a guy who is saying, Here I am. Send me. What? What the heck? What? That's crazy. From someone who says, I can't do it, to someone who says, Hey, let's do it. From someone who says, I got to go, to someone who's saying, Hey, let's go. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, he hears the voice. Whom should I send? Whom should I send? I don't know about you, but there's more qualified people in that throne room. There are angels flying around. There are seraphims flying around. There are people, they're flying around. They're saying, holy, holy is the Lord. I don't know. Maybe, I don't think God was even speaking to Isaiah. I think he was speaking to the angels because remember, the angels were known as messengers going up from heaven to earth, earth to heaven. They were there to carry the messages of the Lord. And all of a sudden, here's little Isaiah thinking he's a sinner, thinking he's, he's faulty, thinking he is filthy. And he sees the angels who are better than him, who could actually do it better than him. But because because he went through the purification because he went through the burning because he went through those areas now he's in the presence of the Lord he says I don't know about you but I want to do this I know they can but I think you're calling me here I am send me church I want you to stand to your feet right now because all of he was different God is calling you we're about to sing this song that breakthrough is coming. God is calling you. God is calling you. God is calling you. And there are these excuses that you're saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I keep messing up. I'm, I'm, I'm filthy. I tried before, but I failed. I don't know. I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to be in a tender. But God is saying, no, no, no. He is holy and he's calling you. He wants you to be a messenger. He will forgive you. Yes, it burns. He will confront you. Yes, it burns. But listen, he will purify you. He will heal you. And so here we go. Come on. We're going to begin to sing this. <laughs>